emocjonujących wrażeń rzeczy Energa z Grupy Orle. Sponsor strategiczny festiwalu Energa Camera Image. Electronic medical services available to the residents of the Kujawsko Pomorskie Wojewodeship. Results from ultrasound and X ray machines are immediately transferred onto the doctor's computer and are available online. What does it mean for you? Faster diagnostics, no waiting in queues, easy communication with doctors from different units, and access to test results at any time. We provide electronic medical documentation for you. Toruń znajduje się na liście światowego dziedzictwa kulturowego UNESCO. To też miejsce, które kocha film z wzajemnością, stając się planem zdjęciowym dla wielu produkcji. Ciekawe plenery pomoże Ci szybko znaleźć kujawsko-pomorski geoportal. Największa przestrzenna baza wiedzy o regionie. To publiczny, darmowy, dostępny dla każdego zbiór map. Prezentuje m.in. ponad miliony działek, budynków, drogi, placówki oświatowe, zabytki i obszary chronione. Wejdź na geoportal Mój Region Info i kręć w Kujawsko-Pomorskiem.
Odpręż się i daj się porwać emocjom. Prawdziwe przeżycie. Coś dla każdego. Spędź jesień z kanałami Filmbox. Poruszające biografie. Uciekam przed nienawiścią. Historyczne zwycięstwa. Filmy pełne wzruszeń i emocji. Raz się żyje. W listopadzie w Kino Polska. Włącz RMF Classic i zmień swój świat. RMF Classic. Najpiękniejsza muzyka filmowa. Fakty RMF. Najbardziej wiarygodne źródło informacji. RMF FM. Radio numer jeden w Polsce. Szybka, intuicyjna, przejrzysta, nowa RPPL. Polecam redaktor naczelny Cezary Szymanek. Nadszedł czas, by usiąść w kinowym hotelu. Poczuć dreszcz filmowych emocji. Otoczyć się ekranami Screen X. Poczuć każdy ruch i zakręt z Ford X. I powtórzyć to kolejny raz i kolejny. Ile tylko chcesz. Najwyższy czas. Poczuć magię kina. W najlepszym wydaniu. Przeżywaj więcej. Cinema City. Partnerem motoryzacyjnym festiwalu Kamer Image jest Autofrelik. Autoryzowany dealer Mercedes-Benz. Chcesz być z nami? Zaszczep się. All right, so let's get started. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Niels de Montgrand. I am based in Roscoe, France, in Lyon, and I run Roscoe's LED lighting business unit. Um, and I created the, the DMG product line with uh, my two brothers, um, and we, uh, for Roscoe, develop and uh, try and be successful um, uh, marketing uh, lights for the film uh, and television industry. Um, uh, I would like to thank our panelists tonight. Thank you all for being here, number one. I'd like to thank our panelists. We have Johnny Franklin right here. Johnny is a London-based uh, gaffer. We have Leo Hinstein, uh, based in Paris, who is an AFC member, AFC cinematographer. And then we have Alice Brooks and Robert Yeoman. Uh, They're both uh, AFC members and cinematographers. So thank you for joining us. So the, today, we, we, I kept the topic general on purpose because the, the, what I'd like you guys to get out of the seminar is uh, to hear some um, on-set experience of cinematographers and gaffer using LED lights and how 
important they've become and why and, and really how do they improve workflow. We all, you know, I know you guys understand the, the concept of workflow quite, quite a bit. And so the, the object is to try and dig a little bit into what those, how those guys use LEDs, what challenges do they have, what kind of problems do they solve and, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to do a quick retrospective on, on, on LEDs because it's, um, it's just a little over 15 years that LEDs have been uh, um, uh, an important part of film sets. Um, I believe, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it all started in 2005 with the light panel one by one. Would you agree with that? That was kind of the first, they, they were uh, through hole LEDs with a little uh, dome in front of it and they, they were kind of hard. And that was kind of the start, the first guys in Los Angeles to, uh, to put LEDs on a PCB for film and television, I believe was light panel. In 2006, Roscoe launched the light pad. I don't know if any of you have used the Roscoe light pad, but that's, that's quite a few years back. You, you, you have used it great. In 2008, Light Gear launched the light ribbon, and then right after the light mats. That was quite a, a big thing for the, uh, for the lighting scene and the, the, the world of LED and film sets. In 2011, Ari launched the L series, which again was a big, it was a big deal when it, when, it, when it happened. In 2012, Kinoflow launched the Celeb units. I'm sure you guys have also put your hands on it and used it on your, on your, on your projects. In 2015, Ari launched the Sky Panel, uh, probably one of the most used lights on film sets today, still, I would imagine. In 2017, Roscoe launched the DMG Mix line. And then in 2018, there's a lot, lot more brands that I could have mentioned, but, uh, and in 2018, Astera launched the Titan Tube, which uh, I also believe was a big game changer, but, you know, putting a battery inside, wireless control, I mean, it, it really changed a lot. And so the, 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 the point of this retrospective is to well, a, a lot has happened in 15 years, a short time to, for, for such uh, technological change. Uh, the technology has evolved drastically. Um, we've gone from monochromatic sources to bichromatic and then full chromatic. Um, and in a very short time, and I know it's been hard for a lot of you guys to kind of follow what's going on and the technology. Um, and then obviously battery inside, I mentioned it with Astera. Um, and, uh, and then the world of wireless control, CRMX, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Uh, we also talk about streaming ACN. Uh, so there's, you know, in terms of communication and protocols, the technology is moving at an incredible speed. And the overall purpose is to uh, improve workflow and help you guys, help filmmakers, you know, work better, faster, smarter. Uh, and this is what we're going to talk about today. So I would like to start with Leo. Um, and so, Leo, this is a, like a question for four, the, the four of you, but well, let's start with Leo. Is I'd like to hear how you can... So you've recently shot a film in Los, Los Angeles called I Love America. Yes. And so I wanted a, um, you to tell us on how, whether you use LEDs there. How the, it, it's, it was a, certainly a challenge for you to shoot it far away from home. And I know you guys do that a lot, but how do you prep your, your lighting list ahead when you're shooting so far away in a, in a, in a place that you, you're, you're less familiar with? And, and I'd like you to also tell us how uh, LEDs have helped you on set. Sure. Um, good night to everyone. Thanks for being here. So, um, yeah, in France, we have this uh, tradition of shooting on location, and uh, we were shooting in uh, Los Angeles on location. The particularity of this project is that my gaffer was 82 years old. It's a very famous uh, legend, I would say, and uh, it was very reassuring for me to work with uh, someone that experienced. He was gaffer on ET, mind you. So um, maybe you know uh, Jim Planet. I worked with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's a he's a great guy, and uh, he he has an approach that's a mix of um, I would say very traditional lighting and state of the art. So uh, some. Uh, HMIs were LTM Cinepars that had like, you know, rust on them. And uh, we also had some very new LED projectors that I had never used before. The, um, like, uh, I don't know, I don't remember the, the name. I think it's Titan maybe also, but I uh, don't remember the manufacturer uh, on which you can adjust remotely the diffusion. On them. Maybe, I know you know. Oh yeah, Rotolite. Rotolite. Yeah, the Titan yeah. from Rotolite has so, an active diffuser in front of it. Yeah. But um, 
the, what, what was great is that Jim has an, as a gaffer, has an approach of not putting that much light, and uh, it uh, corresponds to the way uh, I like to light. And um, in that sense, uh, LEDs have been a great help. And uh, as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I probably one of the few people who used actually the <laughs> Rosco light pads. That, that was for a documentary, and we, we had bought the whole uh, case with all the sizes. And, uh, it, uh, it had been uh, for what we have we had to do. It, uh, they were they were great. The CRI was bad, but uh, the the, <laughs> the functionality <laughs> the and the practicality yeah, was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've been uh, very soft. Yeah, and uh, I, I've been using uh, LEDs uh, for various reasons uh, and various um, situations uh, from a very long time, and um, I'm a very regular user and a long time user of uh, DMGs. Uh, products um, from the very beginning. And what I like about them is that it, uh, it gives the opportunity to, particularly the, the Roscoe DMG products, because they're very light and it, it gives the ability to put the light on location where normally you couldn't, um, or only you could only put lights in, in these places in, uh, in studio with, uh, without uh, having any ceilings, like using some, um, some uh, Creep uh, spreaders yeah, yeah. and uh, stuff, uh, stuff like that, uh, it, or, or extension arms, you, or just gaffer tape uh, if you use a Titan tube or like uh, even lighter uh, LED strips, and so you 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 can have a light directions that normally you would get in a on stage in, uh, on a sound stage. So that's one of the many examples I, I, I can think of of. Um, of how LEDs are a great help in, uh, in my practice as a cinematographer. Okay, and you also mentioned to me that you, uh, you had a big LED list for a film that you shot underground in Paris called Catacomb. I'm not sure of the English name of it. Yeah, it's an American movie called uh, As Above, So Below. As so, Above, So Below, yeah. Uh, okay. That was uh, shot in Paris. We, yeah, we tried, we needed some battery lights that would Battery operated. Battery yeah. would be battery operated. The, um, we had two <laughs> very important uh, issues to deal with: uh, shooting underground, and we had to carry everything. And sometimes we had like to to walk down like 800 steps. So just uh, it, it, it it was not possible. Logistics also. was logistics was very <laughs> complicated, and it was not possible to put a generator in a catacomb galleries for obvious yeah. reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we, we, and that's at this occasion that I we, we ran into, we were presented with my gaffer at the time, we were presented the SL1, okay. the first of uh, DMG's line. Um, and uh, it, it was very, we, we thought it was very handy. We didn't use, <laughs> we used them that much <laughs> for it inside. Too much light. It yeah. was actually too much light, and when you put uh, just a light at the end of the corridor, it looked like someone had opened the, the stage <laughs> door or something yeah. like that. It didn't it felt right, but we used LEDs. Uh, um, it was a, a um, found footage movie, so one of the characters uh, carrying the camera. We had like a small LED panel uh, on it the, that became like the main light. And yep. we all, camera light, yeah. Yeah, and we all, that that was like a prop camera. I would, have, uh, I would have one also uh, on the actual camera. And uh, the actors also were all carrying some um, headlights, some speleology, speleology lights, um, very powerful ones. We took probably what could be considered like the Rolls Royce of speleology lights with two different LED source, one uh, with a beam, one with a broad, uh, broad with a narrow beam, and one with a very broad one. And, um, bouncing this from the head of the actors to the ceiling of the, the narrow galleries made just the, made the was enough. 90 percent of the light of yeah. the movie. Yeah. And the actors were like basically light stands as well. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Very practical. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I had to go to costumes every day and get some costumes because uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, found footage. So the operator is supposed to be uh, one of the characters, and that was very fun, you know, mingling like that with the, yep. all the actors and stuff. That was okay. a lot of fun, yeah. Um, all right. Voilà. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alice, we'll, we'll go to you. you um, you've recently shot uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, 
which I'm very excited to see this week, actually. To, I think screening tomorrow on Thursday. Oh, exactly. yeah. yeah. Um, can you share uh, some onset experience using LEDs? Yeah. Um, I also have In the Heights here, too. And both, both movies were shot in New York City. And we, um, LEDs, the other day someone asked me if we could have done some of the scenes in In the Heights without LEDs. And I don't, I don't think so. I think, um, I think it was an interesting process for me um, because we, we shot a lot of that movie at this intersection in New York, 175th Street and Audubon Avenue, and, um, and all our exteriors were there. And it takes place, the movie takes place in this bodega. It's about a bodega owner. And we, we were originally going to build or build a little bit inside the storefront and then and the, and do all our entrances and exits there and in the end we couldn't do that the, at the very last minute the store owner was really worried if we shut down his business for 4 weeks he'd never he'd never be able to reopen yeah, yeah. yeah so so um, my wonderful the wonderful gaffer on in the heights um, charlie grubbs and i had to make really quick decisions, and so what we did was on on our stage, we all our all our um, all our lights or overhead, our sky source on the stage were all LEDs, and then and so we just and we shot the stage portion ver at the very end of the shoot, and so while we were on location, we just took color temperature readings throughout, and we were able to match the the color of the light perfectly between the stage and and what we were doing every day and so that was that was one way it really helped us um, and then on tick tick boom we use a lot of car drive-bys and we on on many of our sets um, and the way uh, and we used we did LED strips outside of our sets and and we're able to do these car pass chases and it, one of the sets is this apartment and and there's a fight that happens in it, and um, the gaffer on that is um, named Bill O'Leary, and, and we were talking about, like, at what moment do we do those car passes? And we watched the rehearsal, and, and in the end, we decided every time, uh, uh, like, I would just watch the actors, and every time it felt like it was time for a car pass, I'd tap his shoulder, and, and, or we were right next to the dimmer board op too, and so we had like this hand signal thing that went on, and, and that was, it was something that we were able just to do on the fly because everything was in the dimmer board. Yeah, we're and, not stopping and, the work, yeah. And we were able to improv with whatever the actors were doing, so that was really lovely too. Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, Alice. Thank you. Johnny, we'll go to you next. Mm -hmm. So, Johnny, you, um, have a really impressive CV. You've worked on big productions, Mission Impossible, James Bond. I think what uh, the film that did it for you was The Phantom Thread, yep. where you were a gaffer on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mike Bauman was a uh, lighting electrician, yeah, the, uh, camera, no, lighting light cameraman. Light camera, yeah. yeah. So can you share with us? I, I, um, you know, I feel like with you and, and being young and, and working in London, have LEDs, you know, uh, helped you in your career? Like, have they, have, has this technology? Um, helped you on set, of course, but it also like building your career and, and, and getting, to, getting to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I embraced LED technology quite early on. Um, and the I technical could, side of yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. just sort of learning. I mean, obviously, early, early on when they, they first came out and it was a one-by-one one panel, there were a lot of flaws. You couldn't, couldn't control any of the color yeah. or any of the artifacts that it did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you dimmed it down, it would just go a funny color, yeah. and some of the LEDs would turn off, and you just had no control. Um, so. It was just sort of embracing that technology early on and working out what the flaws were to then use those flaws in your favor or, or just to, to be able to tweak them on set and, and know what the flaws are before you offer them up to DP. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I sort of embraced it, especially on Phantom Thread, we, we were throwing in light panels everywhere. Yeah, um, light mats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a, a lot of that was due to the location. We had a restricted location where you, we only had like four foot of light and distance in some yeah. locations. So. Um, to to then get a HMI or a tungsten light to to break down to be s soft enough to come through the window, there would just wasn't enough space yeah. for us to do that. So um, having big soft sources of, of LED sort of just helped us out, yeah. and, and the speed as well that you work at. I think that's one thing that is, is has changed our world is it's just how quickly you can move and the control you have over dimming and color. I mean, there's probably lots of times when you've turned around to your gaffer just before you roll and 
you say, Qu quickly dim that light down or change the color of that light. And I think back in the olden days when you had tungsten or daylight lamps, you'd be... It's hard to get, go back. Yeah, you'd be running that, in right, with yeah. gel and you'd be putting gel on yeah. or you'd put in scrim or, and uh, it's just... Stop the set yeah. and... But yeah. now you can do it during the take while, while it's happening or, or just before you, you tell your dimmer off and you just say, dim that down and you don't have to worry about the color or, or you, you might have put the wrong scrim in, but they're already rolling, so you, you're underexposed. So. Yeah. I think it's sort of changed the, the, the speed and, and the control that we have over, over what we do. And being with Mike on, on, on set must have been quite, quite something. Cause, yeah, I mean, know, he's a, a legend. He's designed yeah. LED products, he's shot um, some major yeah, films. He's, he's done everything you could ever yeah. imagine. He's probably one of the biggest gaffers in the States there is. Yeah. And um, he showed me a lot, and he, he, uh, and he was the one that sort of brought his LED products in. So, yep. And it was very early on that we, they were like Mark I light panels. So. Even we we had the big light eight by eight light panels and yep. we were finding that some sometimes they'd turn off oh, and no. we just didn't know because the, the technology <laughs> wasn't there and the software they were like wasn't prototypes there. or yeah, something exactly, like that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but they were Mike's product and and we just had to make it work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we had to deal with it and and you, all of those flaws sort of make you learn how to use them and it just, you just embrace it and you just so now every time a new light comes out I want to use it and I want to test it. Um, so right. yeah, I think yeah. it's sped up. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, Rob, we'll go to you. So, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, big fan of, of your work, obviously. I'm sure there's a lot of fans in the room, too, a lot of fans. Uh, shooting with uh, Wes Anderson must be quite, quite something. Um, so, you recently shot the French Dispatch uh, in France um, on film, uh, like all of Wes Anderson's uh, movies. And so, my question to you would be, you know, you, you, you decide to shoot on film, uh, for a reason, right? You're looking. You're after a, a, a very specific look on uh, for the for the, on the on the film, and uh, so you you can make that choice of shooting on film. Do you think you can make the choice of not using LEDs? And and have you managed, uh, you know, traditional lighting to new technology lighting? Uh, and you know, wh yeah. What's what's your experience on set? Well, um, echoing what the three of people here just mentioned, uh, like on a stage, and you mentioned the French Dispatch, if you've seen the film, there's a, a kind of a cafe called the Sans Blog, and we built that on stage. And the first thing my gaffer and I did was we covered the ceiling with uh, LED lights, and then we put a very light diffusion under them. And it, it allowed us in my experience, whenever I say that to the producers, I want to put LEDs up, they always moan and groan about it because they're more expensive. But they're so much faster to work with, as they said. You can make changes on the fly so much quicker. You don't have to put scrims in. You know, if you put tungsten lights up there and you dim them, then all of a sudden it's much warmer color temperature. And with the LEDs, you have total control. And what we did in the Sans blog is we had warm practicals inside uh, the cafe, and and then we had LEDs above. Come, we didn't have a ceiling on it because where so where all the practicals LEDs? Uh, some were and some weren't. Okay, yeah, it was the art department, but they were all warm. So I put the the LEDs over the Sans blog. I think I put, I shot them at like uh, 2,400 degrees Kelvin, and then outside it was frequently. Uh, dusk so i would put that at like 48 so i'd have a uh you know we don't shoot with an 85 filter so it'd be much cooler outside and we did a lot of lighting changes in this movie which we hadn't done in the past and with the leds everything was in a board we could do them very quickly you, if you needed a little more light as, as they were saying you could just dial it up really quickly if you need a little less if you want to change the color temperature it's all almost immediate so what I always tell producers is oh yes okay they do cost more ex they cost more initially but first of all they're cooler than putting so the stage doesn't get to be super hot and we move so much faster with them and so there's savings have, in air conditioning air conditioning and also in power because they use way less power than the traditional lights so you, you're saving on so many other fronts that, yes, the initial cost is expensive, but then look at it down the line, it saves you so much. And, and uh, so I'm, I, I, that's my immediate thing. I'm about to start another movie, and I'm already involved in this discussion. And we're putting those, the whole set 
the stage is going to be covered with LEDs up top. And, 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 you know, again, the producers are screaming and yelling, but, you know, I'm sticking to my guns and that's how we're going to do it, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's the way to go. And uh, also on location, I find that they don't use a lot of power, so you, you can move a lot faster, There's, they're a lot more portable, they're, they're thinner, you can put them in places you couldn't stick traditional lights. So uh, they've become a very important part of, of my lighting package, whether I'm shooting film or digitally. Uh, you know, I love them, and I, I just saw the latest Am Amadovar movie yesterday, and uh, uh, the cinematographer, El Kaine, talked about... Jose Luis, yeah. It's yeah. All he uses is LEDs now, because he likes the very soft push of the LEDs, because he initially used fluorescent lights, and I said, so do you use Kinos or what? And he said, no, no, I don't use those anymore. They're too big and bulky, I just use the LEDs. And, and it's just, it, as we work, you know, there's so much pressure to move quickly, and if you want to move quickly, you know, they're the way to go, and, and I think they also have a very nice quality of light, so I'm, I'm a big proponent, so. All right, thank you. Yeah, uh, Jose Luis, I think I, I, I know him a little bit, and he said to me one day, uh, years and years ago, I will never light a face with LEDs. They're just, yeah, but this was years ago, and you know, I, th I do think things have evolved nicely, and they, they used to be a little, a little greenish or magenta, and you had to correct them, and the post-production would scream a little, but they have made some drastic improvements. Oh, you, have, um, you can control everything, you yeah. know, and, it, and, it, and immediately, which is so great. And you can even, you know, to your eye, if it looks a little green, you say, just add a little magenta to it, bang, they do it, you know, yeah. and it's, it's really... I've, I've been to so many sets where people have said, I will not use LEDs to light up yeah. a, a face or a talent, and, they, and, and things have changed so much now, it's like... Yeah. Can't do without them. I, I think that it has, and, and I mean, I tend to put diffusion in front of the lights anyway. So, you know, you just want a nice soft source, and, and they yep. give you that. And, uh, you know, the big LEDs, I, I've been using those uh, on my last film. You know, we, we set them off to the side, and, and we just, I just pump in a, a, as far back as I can put them, you yep. know, the really big ones. And, and I just put a little soft fill in there, you know, and it's shadowless, really, and, and it's just a very soft amount of fill light that fills the whole set, you know, which is it's yeah. a really nice way to go with those as well, so. All right, all right, thank you. Um, I also wanted to touch on, on the, so RGBs everywhere, right? Uh, we, you know, originally we're, we have a Tungsten source, we have an HMI daylight source, and then so LEDs follow that, that style, you know, warm white, cool white, and, and then RGB came along, you know, I think, the, you know, the L-series were full color, the sky panel is full color, and now most uh, LED lights on set are full color. I wanted also, maybe we start with you, Johnny, on how valuable it is to use full chromatic systems as opposed to monochromatic or bichromatic. Um, I, I know you're technical, and, you know, by using more LED, more colors, you're less efficient, right? You lose out in brightness. And so I wanted to have your opinion on, on how useful it is to uh, have RGB or RGB amber, RGB lime, and we're seeing a lot of new um, LED lights that carry new, uh, more uh, color rendition inside them, more spectrum, and so I wanted to have your opinion on this. Um, I think it's uh, very important now to, to do that. I mean, because obviously the originals were the tungsten or daylight, or they used to actually just be tungsten or daylight, yep. and you had to use one or the other, or you put a, a phosphor plate in front of the LED yep. to change yep. the colour. Um, and you just started to find artefacts in, if it was a, a, a tungsten daylight source, when you would dim between the tungsten and daylight, you would introduce uh, other factors, like it might turn green or it might go magenta. Um, and it was all the way that it would follow um, a, a, inside the, the color spectrum, there's the, the whites which are sat in the middle. It's yep. called the Planckian locus. Yeah, the BBL. Yeah, yeah. black body locus. Yeah, and it's actually like a it's a curve. Yeah, it, it curves down. Yeah. So you've got your tungsten at one end and then your daylight at the other. Which so is a straight line. Exactly. Yeah. If you pull one with the other, yeah. you go straight. You don't follow the curve. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I, it. So then what you were finding is you were dimming between the colors and it was taking the most direct route. So yep. it was straight down the middle. Yeah. So it wasn't Physics. following the curve. Yeah. 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 So um, you would then start to inter you'd find all of these artifacts. You'd either go magenta because it was shooting off in the wrong direction, or you'd go green. So then you were having to, to then put gels on the, on the LED sources, which 
was kind of crazy because that's not what they're designed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then, the, obviously, the new technology came out of the RGB, so you could could tweak that slightly, and you could add magenta or or greens. But it's still, um, it wasn't ideal. But but you had that in your locker to yeah. to play with. So um, um, it definitely helps. And, and now, like companies like yourself, where you are actually dialing in the codes so that you can actually follow that 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 locus, so that yeah. we don't have to even think about it anymore. You've got a, a nice clean color all the way through, which is kind of in, invaluable now. Of yeah, we, what we, we made the choice that with Roscoe and many others did too, but of building white light with an addition of many colors mm -hmm. to be able to pull your mix into multiple directions. Yeah. At, at, you know, at the very least three, RGB, and by adding amber and lime, we're able to match that line mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a much more precise fashion. Yeah. And then there's also other factors where it's is, uh, when you would have a tungsten lamp, you'd add, say, like a red gel on it, and you've just killed like a stop and a half of your yeah. light. And there's kind of nowhere to, to go. Even if you're dimmed down, you might be able to brighten it up. But, but I mean, but you, you just have to add another yeah. light and yeah. put another gel on. And then you've got two sources, so you've got to try and make them into one. And, um, and now you're just sort of erasing all of that, and you can just do it in the head. You're not losing any brightness or, or dimming abilities. You just got your color involved in the head. So again, it's just that, that speed of, of us moving on set and, and how we deal yeah. with, with time. Yeah, solving problems, mm. moving faster. Yeah. All right, thanks. Leo, do you want to share some? And, and I added to my, I'll add a little uh, uh, more to my question is, I'm curious to hear about the, um, the language part of uh, managing color with the teams around you. And uh, again, your experience between working at home, working far away uh, with people that you, you've never worked with. Uh, can you touch also on the language aspects of things? Like when you need, I mean, everybody, to talk in gel names and numbers, right? Um, and how do you deal with LEDs and the fact that it's, there's so many colors? The libraries are, the color libraries are infinite, right? So how do you manage also the language part? So value of RGB versus uh, single chromatic uh, LEDs and uh, the, the, the language well, side? I, f we, we tend on set to keep using the gels names, uh, like yeah. the old, even the older numbers from yeah. Lee or Roscoe, because it's, it's, an, uh, it's a habit. But um, on set, uh, I use quite a lot the, the color wheel directly okay. on, uh, on, on the app, uh, like on Luminaire or, or on the... Uh, yeah. the My mix Roscoe app, or, yeah, 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 yeah. App. Um, I mean, when you used to work with daylight or, or tungsten lights, I mean, you you deal with it. Maybe you you add a little uh, uh, color correction, uh, minus green, plus green, etc. Uh, I don't know, no color straw, etc. But when the the RGB uh, functionality gives you much more precision in the, uh, I would say the how you recreate the reality I mean, when. Uh, you're standing next to uh, next to a color like a red wall. You will have like a, a red bounce, so, and uh, the, the 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 RGB gives you the ability to recreate that very easily. I mean, uh, um, and you just if you look at the movies that are shot uh, in the past years, uh, obviously the cinematographers have taken advantage of that. I, I'm not going to elaborate that much because I'm sure people will want to hear Bob. Uh, <laughs> to talk about uh, his um, craft with colors, which I admire a lot too, <laughs> I would say, but it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's something that's, I would, I, when you, you start using that, it's, uh, you, can, you can really go back, I yeah. would say. And so on the language part, you're saying again, technology with the iPad or what? the phone, doesn't re you don't really need anymore to talk too much, you, you've got the tool, yeah, you, you, you push work a button. With the, I, I think, I mean, I, I've shot in many different countries with uh, people sometimes being the only French guy you know, just uh, with my uh, approximate English and uh, huh. working with people who don't speak that much English as well. And uh, what's good with color, but also with contrast, is that it's, uh, it's a universal perception. Yeah. and. Uh, yeah. It's it's never been really an issue. Okay. Like, uh, if you have, if you get on get on well with your collaborators, it's uh, you manage. I would say. Yeah. Alice, have you um, again used the, the the color capacity of LEDs and and uh, does that does it help you? Um, do you go all the way to recommending to your gaffer? I want I, I I'm going to need this for this film or not? Or how how do you 
How do yeah. you manage the, the, the equipment side? From um, so, on, so on In the Heights, we had these two scenes that were, we knew we needed um, RGB, um, color, uh, RGB LEDs. The first one was we did a um, blackout scene where this neighborhood in New York, all the lights go out. And, and so we put the huge LEDs up on all the rooftops in, around for f like four blocks around us and put those at 4,700 um, Kelvin as our ambient source at very, very low. How many sources was that? We, I, I mean, it was, we had one on every corner. Um, I, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I don't know, yeah. somewhere around it was a lot. like yeah. 15 to 20 or okay. something. Okay. And then we also then had a second light, second sources. Then there's all these fireworks that go off. And in New York City, you, I mean, not that you, you would do it practically anyway, but w there's, um, we also on the roofs, on all the rooftops, we used, um, the RGB to pick what color we wanted the fireworks to be, and and that was very specific, and we picked that during during prep, and it created this beautiful beautiful fireworks display, and and I remember as good as a real firework it, it, in your eyes yeah. to the camera yeah. without looking up, it yeah. looked like real fireworks, and and. And I was actually at Disney World right before with my daughter. I have a six-year-older. I guess she was three then. And, um, and, and we were watching the fireworks display. And instead of watching it, I just looked at her face yeah. and, and took video of her face. At, and, then, and those were the colors that we, tr that we matched with, with our LED lights. Um, but then, but then uh, going back Was that to with Bill O'Leary? No, this was with Charlie Grubbs. Okay. Um, and then also on In the Heights, we have this long graffiti tunnel. It's 900 feet long. It's on um, the 191st Street Station in New York. And, and we had picked all our colors also during prep. Um, and it's this long tunnel. And every, every six feet, we put uh, LED. And, and that's how we, on the floor on either side of the tunnel. And it created this arch because it's an arched tunnel. And we picked our colors. But then it's all graffiti, it's graffiti, and so when we, play, when we played those colors, it's chasing lights. When we played them, it, it looked work. terrible, oh. awful. Yeah, it, well, it didn't match. Because it, it, it your prep was, I guess, at the rental house or well, we, in, in we, the studio? Well, we did tests on the stage, but, okay. but there's no way to represent all these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paintings yeah. on the wall. Yeah. So you had to adapt. So we had to adapt, on, and on we all had to adapt fast. We only had, I think we ended up having four hours of shooting time because it had to be in the middle of the night when the station was closed. Okay. And so, and so very quickly we had to start changing those colors, and, and we never, I mean, if we had to go down 900 feet and gel all those lights, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sounds Pretty fun. Yeah, sounds fun. Sounds fun. Rob? Can you share some experience using color on LEDs as well? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll just reference the French Dispatch because it's showing here. And, um, yeah. Maybe some of you have seen it. But um, there was a scene, a uh, couple scenes where we used it quite extensively. Uh, there's a scene where uh, Timothy Chalamet and uh, Lena are on a motorcycle, and it's supposed to be kind of very dreamlike. So we put a giant black... Uh, you know, uh, 12, 20 by 20 way over their heads, and then we just wanted the lights to move and also change colors. And the beauty of using the LEDs, we, we put them on little chasers and things, but Wes can be very specific about things. Could it be a little greener? Could it be a little redder? You know, that kind of a thing. And because we had that control, we could control it really well. And it worked beautifully, so when you see the shots of the two of them on the motorcycle, they're kind of canted angles from down low, and it's very kind of dreamlike. Uh, we, I think we shot like, you know, 60 frames a second or something. And, and uh, it, it really has that feeling because the light is changing as it's moving around them, which was, again, on a chaser, but we could change the color of them at the same time, and it was just really uh, gave us total control over that. And uh, when you work with Wes, that really helps out because otherwise we'd be, as, as Alice just said, we'd be up changing gels and trying to make it work, but we could just program it all in. And then there's another scene uh, of a, a couple in a car when they find out, without ruining the movie for you, they find out their, their child died. I won't say any more if you haven't seen it. 
But uh, and again, we wanted it kind of dreamlike, and we put rain on the windows. You know, we had misting on the rain, and we shot it on a stage. And we did the same thing, where we just surrounded the car with LEDs, and we we had them on chasers, so it's like moving lights. And and again, we changed the light, and we experimented with a lot of colors that I ordinarily probably wouldn't have used. We used green a lot, which is not a, a color I frequently use, but it looked fantastic and and um so the whole scenes were really about the moving lights and the color from my aspect and and the leds made it go like five times faster <laughs> so uh we were really happy to have them on that situation good 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 thank you all right johnny i'll go back to you i want to i, I want to talk about um you know um the technical side battery operation you know accessories again what's how um you know What's special about LEDs, and, and how do you how do you uh, use them in the most versatile way on your on your shoots? Uh, can we have some feedback from you? Yeah, I think um, like every light is, is used as a tool. So there's still a place for tungsten, there's still a place for daylight. So yeah. you've just got to know the right situation to to use LED, and um, a lot of the times is in a studio situation. But then again, it's out in a tunnel that's like a mile long, and you've got yeah. you can't run generator power all the way down to the tunnel. So you've got a battery-powered um, LED lamp. Um, and it, it just speeds up the, the whole process. And things like the Titan tube, where you, you can literally run in and quickly hold one under camera, um, it, I think it just speeds up the whole process. Um, and there's, there's, I mean, for me, I mean, a big thing is, is like Leo says, is, is a light could hit a table, and you want that exact color. So you could just get your light meter, get that color, and just dial it into your LEDs. and when. We were doing it on tungsten or, or HMI. You were just piling up gels to figure out what was close. You were never 100% correct, but mm. but you would try to get close, and then you were killing the light. Um, and it's 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 just it's kind of just changed the way we do things, and it's obviously in a better way. And I, for example, I, I shot um, a little bit of red notice with Marcus, yep. and um, I only did additional photography um, on one scene where one of the actors wasn't on set at that time. Okay. So we had to match exactly what they did in Atlanta, okay. but in London with the actor and, and, and the same set. And you had the same lights? We had were the same using? lights, okay. um, but they were using unusual color mixes. Okay. And they, they weren't anything you could quickly dial in. They were sort of unique. Yeah. Um, so then I spoke like to... Like a specific recipe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then I spoke to Rafi Sanchez, who was the original yeah. gaffer out in Atlanta. Um, and I was like, I'm doing this job with, with Marcus. I just need to do a pickup. And, and he was like, cool. He's like, uh, I was like, have you got the color references for it? Have you got the... the so was that X and Y? Or yeah, spectrum? X and y, what, yeah. yeah, X and Y um, coordinates? And actually on camera, we used the, the, the Minimix. Okay. And uh, we dialed in the color, and he actually then just sent me through the swatch of yep. what we were using exactly. So then he sent me it over text, I had it on my phone, and we just dialed it straight into the light. And Brilliant. I just think that versatility of, of just being able to match something exactly from across the other side of the pond. Yeah, and magic. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Just a phone call, yeah. video call. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, my last question is, uh, and I haven't told you about this one uh, as we were prepping this, this seminar. Uh, don't, don't get scared. <laughs> uh, but do, do you guys think it's the end of traditional lighting? Uh, do you, I, I, you know, I know LEDs have not completely replaced every light source yet, but it's probably going to happen. Do you guys think uh, in 15 years um, an HMI bulb or a tungsten bulb will no longer be on set? And if you, if you don't think that, I'd like to know why. Please, yeah, Leo. Well, people say that of film also. So and, uh, look where we are. People are still using, using film. I just shot a commercial last week the, with a photographer. She wanted uh, it's fashion photography, so she's, uh, she needed like... Uh, um, a very fast uh, shutter uh, and uh, some uh, uh, like very high um, uh, iris uh, di dial down, like shooting at eight and uh, 200, 250 uh, uh, of a second. So that that was a lot of light, and uh, she didn't like HMIs, so we ended up like using. A Tungsten uh, Fresnel, like uh, probably 130 or 150 uh, kilowatts on set, and uh, that would have actually, and you know, more lights, and uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was fun. And 
I mean, that, that would have not been possible with the LED. Today, I've tried uh, like the more Richardson uh, um, 10 LED 10K, but it's like very bulky, very heavy, noisy. So there's, um, for me, there's like, there's room to improve uh, everything. And uh, there's, as firm, some tools will always have their uh, users, I, would, yeah. uh, I guess. And with the tungsten source, and I don't want to steal what anything will say, but we often talk about some, uh, an emotional relationship that LEDs you know, struggle to reproduce. Did, I, it's would you agree with that, or do you think LEDs do the job? The, it's the perfect uh, IRC, so. Yeah, yeah. CRI, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Per perfect yeah, color sorry. rendition. Yeah, CRI, yeah. Yeah. sorry. Um, one, one other aspect uh, I think that that will never go back uh, is uh, the wireless uh, control of everything. I don't know for you guys, but uh, it's uh, yeah. That's just too, it's too efficient. Yeah. Too efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like not only the like the dimmer board, etc., but the, the ability to do to do it uh, remotely, uh, yeah. especially in location. It's uh, what used to be uh, very heavy riggings on uh, expensive uh, sound stages. You can do it like uh, on a very small. You know, student ap apartment and uh, just an app. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm doing a tiny bit of advertising. Those three lights here are uh, DMG dashes, and they have. Oh, Charlie's playing with them. <laughs> yeah. And they have inside Bluetooth chip and a CRMX Lumen Radio chip, which lets you program them and create, you know, chasing effects, whatever, light scenes. Uh, so that's a little uh, advertising. Uh, uh. I, I do think that getting to that point is that that's how our department has changed a lot is that yeah. is that now rather than dealing with cables that go back to a dimmer cabin is we're now having to deal with networks and, and yeah. networking a whole studio yeah. um, dealing with wireless signals and uh, Teradex on yeah. camera on yeah. monitors yeah. and yeah. just actually having conversations with a whole department just to try to figure out where we can yeah. sit within yeah. this <laughs> network of, of wireless signal and, yeah. um, and it, it has its benefits and, and I mean sometimes it'll drop out yeah. uh, you don't really know why, yep. um, and you have to reboot exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. It's, it's problem solving. So like a computer, really. Yeah, and it, it's it, it kind of is now flipping to the point that that desktop, the role of the desktop is getting bigger and bigger. I mean, now as you say, is is generally the desktop will come with an iPad yep. and stand next to the DP, and have that conversation directly because it's just easier. It's easier for them to explain to the the, the desktop what they want rather than to then tell a gaffer. Then the gaffer radios through while he sat at his desk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think there's um, there's benefits and and also just it's it's getting more difficult for us and and now it seems that DMX it's proper geeky. I mean, you yeah, really is, have yeah. to get into it and and DMX is now sort of becoming a bit redundant because yeah. it, it hasn't got enough channels to run all of these lights that now have yeah. a billion multiple LEDs. universe yeah, exactly, for yeah. one Titan tube or exactly, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Imagining um, each pixel requires yeah. an address for each pixel. Yeah, doesn't it? And like the the 360, if you run that at full capacity, you're you're doing like a hundred channels of yeah. your DMX, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. put five of those on a universe, and then you've lost your universe, and yeah. it's just. Did you take training courses and things like this, or did you no, just learn no, everything I, on the fly? I just learn, yeah. You, yeah. you just sort of pick as you up. use, and yeah, yeah. yeah. And you you hire the right people around you as well. I mean, this what a team is all yeah, about. You course, hire yeah. the best desktop, and yeah. he hires the team around him to yeah. to, program. to manage. Yeah. yeah. Alice, do you do you have a, an emotional relationship with tungsten I filament? Do. I do, and, and do you and think LEDs can do it? Can well, reproduce it. I just, um, as you're asking all these wonderful questions, it's 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 just. Um, I, again, I'm thinking back to in the heights because we just use so many LEDs, and we did this one musical number towards the end of the movie. Um, we had this beautiful set, and it's a, a scene where two people dance on the side of a building, and. And the way we did it was we shot our plates in New York. It's, it's supposed to be um, the George Washington Bridge is in the background. And we, we shot our plates um, in, in something called Manhattan Henge, where the sun sets just north of the George Washington Bridge just two days a year, because that was the angle of the sun I wanted on the building. And so we shot our plates a month before we shot our, our, our green screen set. And the way we did it was we had a a, a dance floor, and then we had this vertical piece, and these two people start in a in a fire escape balcony, and then at a certain point, it, we sort of trick the audience, and it tilts down, and we have this big camera move that sort of hides it. But the most fun part about doing this was that our sun and our sun source and our sky source had to change. 
um, so that our, our shadows didn't move. We needed a, a sun source, and that was a huge tungsten light on a, on a crane with four people pushing in, and, a, and someone in the bucket operating the lamp. And, and we called that our analog light. And then our sky source was digital. Um, we called our digital light, and it was all LEDs, and it was three... Um, it was three light boxes made out of LEDs. I think we had 120 um, LED lights through through a, a the light diffusion, yep. and as and those were time those were locked into time codes. So when the music changed, then the lights the lights would uh, that's when the the wall would dip, and so then our lights would would we did this arc of sky. So our sky source remained the same, and then our our analog. Our, our, we had people operating the other light, and that, and 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 so it was a wonderful dance between tungsten and, and it LED, worked. and it was. It, it You're was, happy with the result? It, yeah, yeah, it was wonderful and yeah. so much fun to to figure out. And so I think I think it is like you said, just a tool, and and how do you how do you make those tools work for you mm. for the story? Cool story. Thank you, Rob. Um, I guess for yeah. me. Uh, the big question I have with LEDs is if, like, many times when we have to have a very sharp sun source, we'll get a, a 20K or a 18K, and we remove the Fresnel and, and to make the light super sharp. And so far, I haven't experienced that with LEDs. I'm wondering if they'll ever get to reach that point where they can be that sharp of a, of a, of a Light. So you think it's a, 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 a an issue with the brightness, the the capacity of an LED source to be as just, bright as a bright and just as sharp, you know? Because yeah. even with a Fresnel lens, you can have a pretty sharp shadow. But then, you know, if, if we want it to be even sharper, we always just take the Fresnel out and yeah. do it that way, and you get a super sharp lens. Uh, I think LEDs will continue to get stronger in intensity. It's will they be able to be as sharp as that? Is that a 20K or a 18K, you know? And that, that would be the one thing that I would question if that's possible or not, so. And in terms of color rendering, are you finding similar to the rest of the... Of uh, I love the color rendering yeah. of, of LEDs. So yeah. I don't have a problem with yeah. that. It's just the sharpness of the... Of, yeah. and, I, and like many of us, I tend to diffuse my, the lights anyway and... and a little bouncing. But occasionally you get in those situations where the director will want a very sharp shadow, you yeah. know, or, or I'll want a sharp shadow. And, and uh, you know, in order to achieve that, you need that big so source that you can just make a sharp yep. point of light. So that's that would be my only question. I mean, I... I'm not married to tungsten lights. I use tungsten lights. I've loved them, but I've gradually moved towards LEDs. And yep. HMIs, you know, I, I, I love what they do, and, I, you know, they'll be around for a while, but, you know, the ballasts overheat, the ballasts get noisy. People, could, The sound guy is always complaining about the ballasts, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and they, over, they overheat, and, and the, if it's, you're shooting outside and it's hot, then all of a sudden the lights go out and the director's looking at you, and it's like, you know, what am I going to do? The lights just popped out, you know. And yeah. So, you know, we've all been in that situation, and, and that's been a problem with the HMIs, you know, but there's, I still use them, you know, for sure. If you want a big source coming through a window, I'll put an 18K out there usually. So I think they're around for a while. I don't know how long, but yeah. 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 Johnny, on this question, what's, yeah. your, what's your thinking? Uh, I, I, I mean, you can't really, I've not seen an LED replicate looking straight at a filament bulb yeah. on camera. Um, I just think there's there's just times and a place to, to use lights and and talking about the, the skin rendition of like a tungsten lamp. Yeah. Um, it's Unbeatable. It's, it's, yeah, it's tough yeah. To, to match. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it, again, it's just sort of dealing with, I mean, obviously we're moving towards a dig digital age, so the lights are, are gradually sort of being synced with the camera and they're, they're sort of, you're using RGB sensors, so why wouldn't you use an, an RGB light? Yeah, yeah. Um, just to, to dial in the correct skin tones, and yeah. So uh, I think there's um, a lot more versatility, but I, I still think there's a, a time and a place to use tungsten. Okay. I mean, I've gone on sets and I've lit the whole space in tungsten because it was like a, a 30s movie, so we want it to look authentic. Yeah, so, yeah. And it's hard to, to do that sort of thing with with LED lights. But that there are, I think there are flaws as well because over age, I mean, the sky panel's now, what, seven or eight years old? Yeah, 2015, so six years old. So yeah. for us, uh, when we're rigging hundreds in a, in a grid, yep. um, you could have one that's 
one year old and you can have one that's six years old. Yep. And the color difference between them because the LEDs deteriorated is, is quite drastic. So um, you have to kind of, you, you have to know the tools that you're working yep. with and, and how you control it. I mean, we and tend And it's not a matter of just changing the bulb here. No, so, it's you not. Know, the light is just... Unless you go around and f physically dial in the color of every single one, which no one has time to do yeah. that on hundreds yeah, of yeah, sky yeah, panels. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have, to, you have to know your tools and know yeah. what the flaws are. Yeah. And then build a sort of kit around your camera that, that is clean and, and tested. Um, and it, it sort of gives you the, the correct skin tones because you can kind of deal with all the, the color chaos around you, yeah. but, but skin tone is... is still really important. Yeah. And I think we tend to think that LEDs last forever because we've been, we've been sold that LEDs, you know, were going to last, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of hours, but they they're at the end of the day they're just a bulb. Mm -hmm. They age. Yeah. They lose intensity, which when you're trying to mix several colors together, if you're losing intensity on one, it's going to change your recipe, right? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 create some issues. So there's there's definitely uh, more challenges to uh, to tackle in the future. Well, thank you very much for this. I'm done with my questions. Um, let's open the floor for question, if there is. Does anybody have any question? Oh, here you go. I uh, think we have a mic master right here. Hi. Um, I would be interested to hear from you, um, as a follow-up to the last question, what is it that you actually hope for in the future that will um, be invented, or how the LEDs would change? What are you missing? You said this a little bit, um, Bob, with, um, with you said like you need the, the, the hard um, source, the, the small pointy source, but what else is it? Yeah, I mean, I can just say that, it, I, you know, it's many times we like having hard lights on a set, and uh, I will use tungsten lights or, or an HMI for hard lights. And, and it, I guess for me to see the technology get to a point where you can achieve a much harder light would be something I would look for. And also, the stronger, the more intense. I mean, and, and I've used the big uh, LED lights, and they're great. And they, so the big ones are, they put out a lot of power. I mean, you, she, Alice was saying she put them on top of a you know, building, and you know, they're great. But even, uh, you know, get, particularly when I, because I shoot film a lot, and it needs a lot more light than digital cameras. Uh, I would like to see them get even more powerful to have that option. So that would be my answer. I am um, on my movie Tick, Tick, Boom. It's a period piece. It takes place in 1990, pre-LED. And there's a stage portion of, of, the, of, the, of the piece. And uh, we worked a lot with the art department to try to figure out, was there, gonna, was there some LED that we could house inside of inside of the, the light fixtures um, to look like par cans, and, but still hide it. And there just wasn't anything. And I really would have loved the control, color control of not just using a tungsten source. And, and so like being able to, to make, figure out how to make, uh, how to create period looking, looking LEDs or, or something like that. Yeah, I, I concur with the with the need of uh, hard light and uh, like a single single source uh, LED. Single powerful source. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, probably um, on, on, not uh, related to the rendering, but uh, I think uh, we, there's the issue of uh, all the recycling of the LEDs, which which is a big issue because we use yeah, them the batteries and, and yeah. the batteries, etc. Yeah. Which yeah. so it's uh, also. Um, uh, Real topic. Uh, yeah. I, uh, on a personal level, but uh, also with the AFC, we we would like to uh, uh, see some changes, and uh, you know, yeah. it's a it's a probably a, a great challenge for the, the future years. Yeah, yeah, technology and yeah, totally. Johnny, any any thinking on what's missing? Um, for me, I mean, the biggest thing for LEDs I find is is the you could have. A sky panel, and you could have a vortex, and you could put one at 3,200, and the other at 3,200. They could be completely different colours. So it's, just, it's kind of. I feel like there needs to be some sort of universal language that people actually are talking to each other to try and sort of 
make all things quite yeah. simple. And, we do and try. Yeah. I can reassure I know, you, we do try. It's <laughs> not easy. We're all um, over the world, and we do try. And, and, and uh, I think that's sort of quite important because it's, it's very hard to mix different brands of lights on the sets. But I mean, we have to because... Yeah, you're never going to shoot with, the, no. with the, just this, this one light. It's um, always going to be a blend. So, I mean, that, that's what I would like to... So to color see. matching, yeah. LED, different LED sources that say that they're doing the same, but they're really they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only way for us at the moment to try and do that is using X and Y coordinates and, and actually pin picking, like pinpoint a, a place on the color spectrum. But then... The problem with X and Y is you only got a part of the story, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Because you can buy a... $10 LED tape, RGB, yeah. that can match an X and Y value mm -hmm. the, of a sky panel, yeah. but the spectrum delivered is going to be drastically different. Right? Yeah. So yeah. X and Y, we're, we're trying to educate away from X and Y. It's, it's two numbers, so it's very easy yeah. for the dialogue between the well, board. And, and we find as well, it's even the, the language between two points. So if you wanted to dim between a tungsten X and Y and, and a daylight X and Y, yeah. is, it kind of gets a bit mixed up of yeah. how yeah. to take, make that journey across yeah. the, the color spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think it's, gonna, it's a challenge to move away from X and Y because it's so, so simple. Yeah. And I, I hear so many times a, a film set is not a lab. Yeah. Right? We, you know, we've got labs, we work at things ahead of time, but you guys don't, don't have time to experiment too much yeah. on set. The prepping times are usually getting shorter. And so, yeah, uh, yeah it's definitely a, a challenge that we, we do talk about with the other manufacturers. But again, I think it's a similar thing. I, I, I would like to see a harder source, um, a bigger source. Um, but uh, for me, I, I find that the you will, you can never really get the shadows correct, and okay. and it feels like the the tighter you get an LED to make it look like one source yep. is is kind of the, the better thing because that's what creates your hardness. It's yep. it's a yep. single point source. Um, so I'd like to kind of see that direction of, of trying to compact LEDs. Yeah, there's a lot of it. heat issues. Yep. LEDs yeah, LEDs heat up and cooling them down is is one of our biggest challenges. LED manufacturers is to cool down the LED without making too much noise for the sound guys. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, by far the <laughs> it's by they far the... They always complain. <laughs> Any other questions from the crowd? Yep, right here. Uh, so so you, you, you all say that you use LEDs and uh, for a beginner like me, uh, what brands are you talking? Uh, what brand LEDs? I mean, personally, for me, it, uh, there's a lot dictated to us in the UK because we use lighting companies, so we might ask for a, a thousand vortexes, but they might not have them, so you have to use sky panels. Um, so in some senses, a lot of the stages are, are, are dictated, but, but again, I mean, I, I don't really see them as just using one brand, as one brand's better than the other. I just see them as a, just a different tool, um, like using a little mix book on the camera. Um, is different to using something else because you've got full control on the desk, whereas something else you haven't, you've got to run over and dial it in on your hand. So I would just see the different lights as, as different tools to use and not really a brand that I would go to. Leo? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it really depends on the, on the projects you're shooting and obviously you won't use the same lights uh, if you're shooting on stage or if you're shooting uh, on location, on the narrow uh, n narrow rooms etc um, in france uh, the uh, rosco dmg uh, line uh, is has become pretty standard which is not the case in the us for instance um, for whatever reason uh, uh, we're trying yeah. you know it takes time <laughs> with uh, new kids on the block and it you know, <laughs> takes time yeah but uh, in france we like the versatility of the sl1 uh, DMG uh, products because they're light and they're easy to, to rig on, on spreaders, but uh, we also use uh, ARI, which is the standard also, I mean, that you will find every, everywhere. Uh, we use uh, Asteras, uh, we, use, uh, we have these... Uh, there's not so many of us. I think when, when you look at how many brands available, it's, there's not so many, like uh, maybe a dozen so brands yeah. uh, uh, for the whole world. So. I personally like uh, Ruby lights, which are long, uh, flexible, soft, flexible, yeah. flexible strip, magnetic, and yeah. with a magnet, uh, uh, R-U-B-Y, ruby light. Yeah. And uh, they were designed by a French gaffer, and um, they're not RGB, RGB though, but they're really handy yeah. uh, in cars, so also, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it really depends on, uh, on the situation, and uh, again, their tools, and you just need to figure out what will be the correct tool for the scene you will have to light. Oh, um, 
I think on all, all my recent movies, I had, you know, was able to use all the different brands and we had everything, you know, everything available because each one it, it helps in different ways in different spaces. But, you know, when, what year did Lightyear come out? 2008, the ribbon. yeah. The ribbon? Yeah, okay, ribbon. so when, when the Lightyear ribbon came out, um, I work with a gaffer in LA and, you know, we were making really, really small movies. And so we just created our, we, we bought a ton of the Lightyear light ribbon and just made all these lights out of it so that so so that because no one was going to rent us led lights and and it made a huge difference that we had these little tools that that were that we knew we had and it in the end it didn't cost very much and then and then we were able to do creative things with it uh i echo what everyone else has just said um you know you get a specific light because you like it for a specific reason. Um, also, you know, what happens to me anyway is, is it depends on what lights the lighting company has. And, and the choice of the lighting company is often myself and the gaffer. And I do a lot of work overseas in Europe. So I, I let the gaffer kind of choose the lighting house that he's used to working with and, and comfortable with. But then it comes down to production. Sometimes they'll want to rent a camera and lights from Panavision or Airy or whoever. And so they have a better price if they rent it from that particular company, for, if they make it a package deal. So again, it depends on what lights they carry. So that, that determines a lot as well. But we tend to kind of mix and match, just like everyone else has said as well. So thank you. Any more questions? Oh. One in the front and one in the middle. So uh, I'm curious, have you guys tried the point source LEDs, like the COBs, like Aperture have started manufacturing two years ago maybe? Because both you, Rob, and Johnny talked about how you cannot really recreate like the harshness and the punchiness of like a bare HMI. And I found when using like the 1.2K LEDs in like LED power 2K, that it really is very similar. So I'm interested if you have tried those COB lights. I have not. Uh, I, I have. I mean, I, I, um, I used the Philex lamps uh, quite a lot uh, because they're the closest. Q4, to, Q8. Yeah, exactly. Yep. They're the closest to a Fresnel replacement that, that we've had so far, that, which is LED. And, and they're doing exactly what I was talking about, where they're, they're putting LEDs on a, a tiny chip to make it a single point source. So I think there's definitely items available to, to create those hard shadows. But I mean, when I'm talking about an 18K lamp, I just, there's just nothing even close to it. Um, and to create an LED that would put out that much power is, is, I think you'd need such a big heat sink on the back that it would just be unmanageable. So I think there's got to be a lot of technology moving and, and just to even figure that solution out to how, how you even do it. I think they have also very, they don't have like a large lens compared to a, like a 10K or a tungsten, or which has makes a huge difference in terms of uh, softness of the light and the quality of the beam. Have you used those, Alice? You haven't. I have not. Okay. I think we had a question. Yep, right up here. Thank you. Hello. Uh, is there for you a difference on uh, lighting with LED on a film stock or digital? Is it the same, same uh, work, or do you have to uh, in film stock? I think maybe there is another color science, of course, and uh, maybe uh, can uh, can we use the same tool with a uh, LED? That's my question. Uh, the answer for me is yes, you can use the same tool. And uh, we typically, if we're using LEDs, uh, I just start, if we're in the interior, I start at 3200. And then my gaffer and I will start playing around with the color temperature. And, uh, you know, with film, I find, for me anyway, because we shoot, uh, the ASA of the film we shoot is 200. Whereas the digital cameras, I, uh, someone told me the other day they shot the Sony 
then it's at 2,500. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I usually shoot Alexas and at 800, 1,200, but we need more light. So that would be the big difference for me is we, we need more light the quantity. to shoot film. More, the quantity of light is... Yes, quantity what, of What light. is it, times two, times three? Yeah, times three, really. Times three? Yeah. Okay. And, and so I need a lot more light when I'm shooting film than I do uh, when I'm shooting digitally, I find. You know, it's, I'm always amazed with the digital cameras how they can shoot in such a low level of light. It's, it's just outrageous to me, so... <laughs> It's the nice, I mean, the nice thing about the LEDs is um, is with tungsten lights, you dim them down and they get so warm. And, and with the digital cameras, it is, it's, I mean, it really is about taking away, taking away the light. Um, the, the last two movies I shot, we shot at 1600. And it's, it, literally we had sky panels on every roof dimmed down to like nothing because it was too bright. So. Um, they really see everything, and and so um, so so it, the, that's the nice part about LEDs is that you don't have to worry about your color temperature shifting. Uh, for me, I, I find that that digital cam digital cameras all read light differently. Um, it's similar to the same way that manufacturers don't share LED tricks of how they color them. Camera companies don't course, share yeah. how they. Made a sensor they're all the look. same sensors. Exactly. They're all similar yeah. sensors, but they're all um, so you'll find that, differently. that some produce more red, or some produce more blue, and, and uh, but really that only matters when you're mixing camera formats. Like if you want a red and an Alexa shooting next to each other, then you have to start thinking about dialing the colours in, or, or matching cameras, or putting a lot on one camera that matches the other camera. Um, but it, 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 the, every camera is different, and it's just. It, so you think it's useful to have those uh, LUTs, lookup tables, um, inside the lights that match camera sensors? Do you, do you find it, do um, you find it to be a useful feature? Yes and no. I I, uh, I know there are manufacturers that, that include the camera yep. settings that yep. that essentially put you on the plane of, of the digital sensor. Yep. But but that's one manufacturer. Yep. If every manufacturer did <laughs> it and they all did the same thing and you knew they were the same thing yeah. then then maybe it would be good but yeah. there's no point in having one light on set that is matched to the camera and the rest will just do what they want yeah, yeah. all right any more questions ah we got one here thank you for the discussion um i know we talked about the practicality and ease of dialing in color but i'm curious if you think your relationship with colors changed over the years as it's become easier to try things out have you become more adventurous with your use of, of shades and tones and also now that with such a wide spectrum there's kind of infinite possibilities and you've got digital cameras where you can dial in precise white balance and tint how are you managing that conversation with your directors when you can kind of now offer up anything to them Regarding, yeah, I think definitely, uh, as I was uh, saying uh, earlier, uh, I think cinematographers in general have become more adventurous in colors uh, because it's they're easy to use and uh, you can experiment and uh, it's uh, it's easy to experiment and set. And if you want to go from pink to uh, peacock, uh, you don't have to run <laughs> and change uh, tons of uh, tons of light, even if it just. Uh, which it just uh, as in a snap you change the whole set. So obviously uh, it uh, it opens a, a lot of uh, possibilities. And re regarding the 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 color spectrum, um, I think uh, it's a it's a re it's a real issue of, for cinematographers uh, now to kind of regain control on uh, on their uh, on their image uh, and uh, it, it's uh, it's um, by the use of uh, a lot uh, a lot and um, they've become more and more evolved and uh, um, yeah it's uh, uh, LEDs uh, LED lights are are a way of uh, gaining that control I mean you you have more and, yeah, the, yeah. and the and the camera, the parameters in the camera too, right? Uh, the, uh, um, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, regarding the color, I think uh, a lot of uh, of of the 
the rendition that you're trying to achieve comes also from you know post production but what also like the the LUTs and the settings that you're creating uh, in prep and then with the uh, with the light you can also go further but in terms of uh, my feeling is that in terms of quality like manufacturers of cameras manufacturers of lenses you just have to step outside it's a there's been like a an evolution that's been really crazy over in like 10 years and uh, um, how to to be creative uh, in a way is uh, is with the light and with the use of uh, a distinct look that you will uh, you will create i would say um, on on my movie, Tick, Tick, Boom, the director, um, his name's Lin-Manuel Miranda, and he comes from a theater world and had all, uh, throughout the movie, it's about um, Jonathan Larson who wrote Rent, and he wanted, he had all these very specific color ideas um, that are very, I mean, they're, they're little teeny whispers, hints to different shows that, that he loves. Um, and so, so, he would say, I want pink, and but pink could be anything. And so we, we went through and we went through all these different gel choices for him so that, because some of them were shows I had never seen um, and, and, and but, but all these little teeny sort of inside baseball things to theater that he, he wanted for theater lovers to, to know and, and, or, and, and then just have the audience feel a certain way with color. And so it was, it was, and and so it's interesting. He's a first-time film director, and so it was interesting working with him and him sort of making these kind of brave choices. Um, and and you're happy with the result? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it's 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 it was, was it really daunting? really interesting. Was it, yeah. was it a little daunting going into it, or, or not not too no, much? No, no, no. Because no. I, I think I think it, it's probably it was one of my favorite collaborations because the like the production designer and the director and I just all set, all were together all the time and even through storyboarding um, the, the the production designer sat with us so that we could so that so that he could incorporate things into the set design that we wanted and and was always there listening and and some of those were lighting choices too in sets so it was pretty wonderful cool I find that uh, with LEDs and digital cameras, I'm much more adventurous, to answer your question. Um, I make a joke, the difference between lighting for film, before we shoot in film, I say, take out a single out of the fill, and with digital, I say, put a double in the fill, you know? I mean, it's, you, you, it really allows you to be more adventurous, and, and people who've shot a lot of film, um, there's always that moment when it, you're shooting a night scene or something and you've read everything with your spot meter and you're just not totally sure about things and you know and that's when you might add a little more light than you may might need and i think that's something a lot of cinematographers myself included are, are have a tendency to do that whereas with digital you say no there's plenty of light there you know so i i, I find i've gotten more daring in my lighting and with leds i think the, the being to play with colors you can see it right there, and, and it allows you, rather than put another layer of green on, oh, maybe do half green, you know, it, it's, it allows you to do it so quickly, and, and so I think I've become much more adventurous in how I shoot because of digital cameras and LEDs. I, I kind of um, echo Robert's point there, is, is that, uh, I mean, I've, I've done films, and obviously you all have where you shoot on film, and you, don't know what you're getting the next day. You hope you've got it, you hope you've exposed it properly. And it was kind of the same thing with, with uh, putting colors on lamps, is that you're kind of, you're making that bold move to put a color on the lamp, that, which you don't really know how it's reacting to the camera or the sensor. Whereas digital sensors, you just see it directly. So it, it just, I think it allows you just to, to be risky because you can see it and you're not having to wait up at night worrying that you, you <coughs> got the footage from the day before and it looks good. So. I think it does sort of allow you to, to play around a bit more. One more question. Here we go, up there on the right. Thank you. And this will be the last question. Thank you. Hello. I would have two small questions, but in one, it's, it's uh, the same, allowed it's to. The same topic. Let's, ha let's have the uh, first one. Yeah. And For the cinematographers, um, 
Uh, have you happened to take into account this potential uh, light issues, LED spectrum issues, in your uh, image workflow, color workflow, in post-production and finishing? And for you, Nils, the second question, are, uh, in your research and development, are you uh, taking in account that there is no such only the camera, but camera and treatment, and camera treatment? And camera treatment is as important today because it's evolving uh, as the camera rendering itself. So are you aware in research and development that technology is advancing and maybe is it worthy, is it worthy to, to have a perfect color spectrum when with uh, color treatment and with color treatment tools today you could uh, fix it? Well, maybe uh, back in the days uh, you would take like the funny color rendition into account when uh, it came to using LEDs, but nowadays you just switch them on and voila, uh, you don't you don't take take them into account and uh, maybe more shooting on film, uh, you, but you we have tools to measure the. the temperature, the CRI, uh, the green and magenta, etc., the, the tint, but uh, on shooting digital, you just have, uh, if, you're, if your monitor is properly calibrated, and as it should be, um, your, you, what you see is what you get, almost, and uh, you, or, or your, your job is to know what, you, what you'll get, I would say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, so, Personally, I, I, I don't choose, a, a, I mean, all the major manufacturers are, if, 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 as you said, when you use, uh, when you use like uh, uh, DIY <laughs> custom uh, LED strips, uh, I remember shooting in Thailand, and I, uh, I was in 2013 or 2014, and I asked for uh, SL1s uh, from DMG, and they didn't have it, but they came with the same shaped <laughs> LEDs uh, lights, but they were all made of, uh, Strip. of, of strips, homemade, uh, yeah, yeah. homemade strips with like a car battery or something, and uh, yeah. they were very green. We were shooting in the foliage, so it was not that bad, and it gave like a little look, but uh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just laughing because on, on In the Heights, we actually used a ton of theatrical LEDs in combination with film LEDs, and and moving we, lights, a lot of moving lights, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. a lot of moving lights. And, and so suddenly, suddenly the, it, it, like we put in the color temperature for, for the theatrical light, and it was not the same. And then we put it into our movie lights, and they were not the same in, in any way, shape, or form. And so, so then we had to figure out a way to, cal to calibrate the theatrical moving lights to, to our uh, uh, to the, the theatrical lights that are moving lights to our 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 um, our sky panels or whatever light we were using at the time and so it was it was really luckily we found that out during testing and so so then always when we'd pre-lit sets we always had a camera there because it, it it we needed to match them pretty closely yeah I think what you just said is really important in pre-lighting because uh, oftentimes production I don't want to sound anti-production. I really don't. <laughs> but production we won't, doesn't doesn't want to pay to have a camera there and and uh, uh, an assistant camera person there, and and it's so valuable for just the reason Alice just touched upon to be able to sort out all these problems now. And and another thing I found uh, years ago, I was shooting uh, a movie in Budapest, which I love Budapest, but. Uh, it, it, we found shooting on the streets at night, there were so many different light sources and invariably one of them strobed, you know, and then we'd have to play with the shutter to try to find one. And, and with film, you know, you often wouldn't see that until your dailies, and, and, but with, we were shooting digitally and so we were able to track down, you know, the, the strobing light, but there was always one light in the background that was, you know, because they all have different frequencies there. And, and it's just so important to, Test this stuff out as much as you can beforehand, so you don't get burned the night you're actually shooting it. You know, and 
I wholeheartedly agree. If you can get a camera there and just work it all out beforehand, it saves you a lot of time and pain later. You want to add anything, Johnny? No, I think it's just going back to that, yeah. that same question of, of, of sort of knowing your tools and knowing what they, they do and, and um, just making sure that the lights you have around your actors are, are good, that you should test them and, and test the colors with the camera. And, um, and obviously on set now, the, the DIT is quite an important role because cause they're basically dialing and looking with the DP and <coughs> checking levels. And um, it, it shouldn't really get to the point where we just let things go. Like we have control, so we should try control it there. And then there's obviously time where, where you, you lose out and you, you don't have the time to, to change your light or something's too bright and you don't have time to do it. So you just have to deal with it in post. But, mm. but I mean, our industry is moving incredibly fast now. I mean, it used to be quick, but now it's incredibly fast. Yeah. And, and going on to other projects, you kind of want to go in, with especially DPs going into the grade, they want to have a look that they sort of had, had worked on as the base, so then they can just tweak it. They don't want to grade the whole thing because they didn't change the light in the background. Or and um, trying to answer your question, we, we do think about, well, uh, you know, our, we work for the DP to, uh, our job is to deliver a quality, a good quality of light. Uh, so our challenge is, uh, you know, buying, we don't make the LEDs ourselves, we buy them from manufacturers, so buying consistent batches that will match from one year, you mentioned, uh, it, the LEDs age, but from the, the, the way they're made from one batch to another, they can vary as well in, in brightness, in color point. So our biggest challenge uh, as LED manufacturer is the, we call it the binning or the sorting of LEDs. That's, that's uh, and our, um, and then we can, as we're making white light with multiple colors, we're, we're creating recipes, we do have a bit of space for adjustment. If there's inconsist inconsistency, like if we buy a batch of reds that is, that is less bright, bright than the batch before, we can play with the remaining of the recipe to, to adjust. Um, so we do, you know, our job is to try and deliver a good quality light. Because we, uh, if the DP has to deal with, even though the post, there's the, the post production tools are there, if the DP, if there's a lot of post production, the DP is going to come to us. It's going to say your light is is not good. You gotta, you know. So, um, and and we um, in, on the mixed lights we use a phosphor coated red, which when you turn on our red at a, at a full saturation, uh, you'll see it, it looks less saturated than the standard red, and the reason is that we. Uh, it looks better on skin tones. We we pick that red, which is kind of a little bit of it. It is hard to go against standards because if you want to match our red with another red, you, you well you simply you, you won't be able to because it looks a little bit different. But the reason why we picked it is because uh, a DIT told us one day that you know uh, skin color was number one priority, uh, DIT and the DOP together, and so we we went out uh, our R and D. We did our R and D research around how do we. Um, how do we uh, play with that R9 that you've, I think everybody's suffered with, the, the famous R9 that wasn't part of the original CRI, then was, was added into the next generation CRI. And we, my first years as an LED manufacturer was like, what's your R9? How is your R9? And he's like, oh, well, my, and he's 80. Oh, well, 80 is not so good. And so uh, we did a lot of work on, on this phosphor-coated red. Uh, it has a wider spectrum. It's uh, a standard uh, saturated red is very narrow on the spectrum. And so our red is, is not as deep, but it's uh, broader on the spectrum, and it helps all of our white light recipes. Uh, we, we use it, so. And it's very good for color skin, uh, color, color. Uh, sorry, skin color. I, think, color, I color. think also okay. just to, um, to add to that is that uh, LEDs in a lamp produce the same, like a lot of them are from the same company, or, um, but it's actually, a lot of it comes down to the software and the color mixing. Um, behind the LED, and, and the good thing oh, yes. about a lot of these sources is that that you can upgrade software and you can yeah. deal with issues after. So, I mean, a lot of time you'll get a new light and it will get tested on the floor, and it might be no good, and then you have to to answer back to yeah. the manufacturers. And and we are looking into, and we're talking with rental houses a lot about creating a, a managing a way of calibrating lights, old lights, older mm -hmm. lights, uh, to make sure that when you have you were mentioning the sky panel looking so different because it's six years old versus the one that's one year old. Yeah. Uh, we are working on, on uh, systems to be able to calibrate lights inside the rental house so that they don't have to come back to us in the lab and be tested. So we are trying to make some progress here. But it's, 
I, th I think for, for me as well, it also makes a difference being able to talk to the manufacturer. I mean, there are certain companies that you just, you, you could try all year to try and find a person to speak to that would change the software for you to, to do something and, and have no luck. Whereas there's some companies like, like Salesware, you can actually speak to you directly and tell you the issues and... Yep. and we love issues. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's how we progress. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, guys, uh, for this. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And we'll see you in the bar or somewhere else in the rest of this week, especially in the bar. <laughs> All right, thank you. Emocjonujących wrażeń życzy Energa z Grupy Orle. Sponsor strategiczny festiwalu Energa Camera Image. Electronic medical services available to the residents of the Kujawsko Pomorskie Voivodeship. Results from ultrasound and X ray machines are immediately transferred onto the doctor's computer and are available online. What does it mean for you? Faster diagnostics, no waiting in queues, easy communication with doctors from different units, and access to test results at any time. We provide electronic medical documentation for you. Toruń znajduje się na liście Światowego Dziedzictwa Kulturowego UNESCO. To też miejsce, które kocha film z wzajemnością, stając się planem zdjęciowym dla wielu produkcji. Ciekawe plenery pomoże Ci szybko znaleźć kujawsko-pomorski geoportal. Największa przestrzenna baza wiedzy o regionie. To publiczny, darmowy, dostępny dla każdego zbiór map. Prezentuje m.in. ponad miliony działek, budynków, drogi, placówki oświatowe, zabytki i obszary chronione. Wejdź na geoportal Mój Region Info i kręć w Kujawsko-Pomorskiem.
Odpręż się i daj się porwać emocjom. Prawdziwe przeżycie. Coś dla każdego. Spędź jesień z kanałami Filmbox. Poruszające biografie. Uciekam przed nienawiścią. Historyczne zwycięstwa. Filmy pełne wzruszeń i emocji. Raz się żyje. W listopadzie w Kino Polska. Włącz RMF Classic i zmień swój świat. RMF Classic. Najpiękniejsza muzyka filmowa. Fakty RMF. Najbardziej wiarygodne źródło informacji. RMF FM. Radio numer jeden w Polsce. Szybka, intuicyjna, przejrzysta, nowa RPPL. Polecam redaktor naczelny Cezary Szymanek. Nadszedł czas, by usiąść w kinowym hotelu. Poczuć dreszcz filmowych emocji. Otoczyć się ekranami Screen X. Poczuć każdy ruch i zakręt z Ford X. I powtórzyć to kolejny raz i kolejny. Ile tylko chcesz. Najwyższy czas. Poczuć magię kina. W najlepszym wydaniu. Przeżywaj więcej. Cinema City. Partnerem motoryzacyjnym festiwalu Kamer Image jest Autofrenik. Autoryzowany dealer Mercedes-Benz. Chcesz być z nami? Zaszczep się.